Hello. In this video, we're going to teach you how to search for listings in RoTMX, which is a data vendor, RLS data vendor here in New York City. And we'll show you how to not only search for listings here, but how to save a search for a client, uh, set a client up for a search alert in our systems, and simply how to send listings uh, in the RLS to clients through RealTMX. Remember, uh, RealTMX is a third-party data vendor uh, that uh, brokerages can use to access Rebni RLS data. And the Rebni RLS is the uh, broker database, uh, the equivalent of the MLS here in New York City. Make sure you hit sales, otherwise you will only get rental results by default. Don't want in contract, those already have a fully executed contract in place, there's essentially no chance of buying it. You only want to search for ones that are active. Perhaps you are looking for a minimum of at least two bedrooms, or let's say three. At least two bathrooms. Perhaps you wish, some people wish to have an elevator, they don't want walk-ups. Uh, perhaps they really need a um, uh, pet's okay because they have a dog, and uh, perhaps they really want laundry in unit, they want a washer dryer in their unit. Perhaps also they only want a condo versus potentially seeing co-ops in other and maybe townhouses. Some of these others are less important. Uh, you could look for ones that have an open house coming up within a certain date. Um, this is actually pretty interesting because uh, if a property has an open house listed, it's a good sign that it's still available. So that is a trick that you can use to search for listings that are more uh, definitely available. If you scroll down, you'll see that you can actually search for a specific building address if you would like. Uh, this is useful if you are using this purely to search up a listing that perhaps a client has mentioned or you've seen something on a public search site like a, you know, New York Times or Zillow or Street Easy and you want to see what the commission, uh, the code broke is to buyer's agents, uh, then this is a way you would search. You wouldn't, uh, if that is the case, you would actually not have any criteria and only search for the address and then see the listing and see how much commission is being offered. And then, so this is assuming we're doing a general search. Let's see if anything comes up. Let's actually increase the price range just to make it a little bit uh, easier to find something. So you'll see a bunch of results that appear. You can see private notes that are only shown to brokers. Price history. Some of this information won't be in public search websites like a Zillow. Uh, for example, uh, the views, the specific city view, this usually won't be available on public websites. Um, information such as this usually won't be available, condition won't be available. So there is some value in looking in the broker, the RLS broker database. Um, another key uh, thing that won't be often available is the down payment, so the max financing, or in this case, the minimum down payment. Uh, this usually is not available on public search sites. Uh, and of course, lastly, and, and most important, the fee, or in this case, this is the code broke to buyer's agents. So if you bring a buyer, uh, they are willing to split commission. So in this case, it would it is most likely five five percent um, commissions are split 
at least 50-50 with the buyer's agent. So this is, if you bring a buyer, uh, the listing agent is willing to split 2.5% with you. And that's at least 50% of the total commission. So go over to the other side. So if you take a look, there are actually quite a few results uh, for this particular search. Look to the right, 279 listings. For the sake of simplicity here, let's refine the search to, to have less options. Oh, one thing that uh, we could have filtered by as well, this is searching all of uh, essentially New York City, uh, everything that is in the Revenue RLS. So you can obviously uh, search by specific locations as well. So perhaps this family who is searching only wants to be downtown, let's just say that. They want to be in a few specific neighborhoods that they've mentioned that are very hip. Let's just say those three for the sake of example. So those three are selected. And let's reduce the price to three to see if anything comes up. Only eight listings. So now you can click through each one. You see ones which actually have open houses listed. Um, this is a sure sign that it's actually still available. Uh, one of the best things you can do to help a buyer uh, is to contact uh, listing agents, for example, for these two that um, you know take a look, try to make sure that they're curated for the the buyer that fits what they're looking for. And if it's been on the market for this one says 141 days, um, well, this one might not actually be available. So how you can add a lot of value for buyers is to take a look at this one, see if they've had any recent price changes, because the last thing you want to do is to show a listing that is no longer available. So the last status change was in November of the prior year. So there doesn't seem to have been much activity. There is no open house listed. So this is most likely not available with 140 days on market, no activity. What you can do though, to add a lot of value is to actually call um, or shoot a quick note to the listing agent just to confirm whether it's still available before you send it to your client. And uh, if they tell you, hey, listen, we have a contract that's dragging on, but it's about to be signed, uh, no longer showing it, then you have specific inside info on that listing and you can actually save your buyer client a lot of time um, by telling them this specific info that, hey, like here are ones I've already searched, I've confirmed they're available, this one I've spoken with them, they have a contract out, it's not available. Um, that adds true value to someone who is searching. So anyway, let's pretend you've selected these three, you've also confirmed they're available. If they have an open house, it is available. Um, so it's a, that is an easy signal, but uh, let's assume you've spoken with this listing agent, 31 days on market, and you've spoken with the listing agent and they said it's still available, so then let's send these. You can send it to, let's see, samplecustomer at yahoo.com. So go ahead, we have a sample email here just for the sake of example. Uh, you can select any of these. Uh, this one seems to work quite well. Uh, it's personal preference, really. Uh, for the subject, I recommend putting something catchy and personalized. This is, you know, it seems like you found three beds for under three mil, as this client suggested. Use your contact info. Uh, show the full address. I mean, there's really no need to hide um, addresses. I mean, everything can be found online anyway, especially for sales. And then uh, I would write something personalized here. You know, make sure that you're not just sending a blast of listings. You know, you're not just filtering and then sending a hundred listings, uh, many of which they probably have seen before are not available. Like that's not helpful. Um, so you know, try to be helpful. You uh, have gone through and you know handpick three or four listings usually to start, so you don't overwhelm them. 
and you've you know curated these selections for them because these are ones that you've checked that are available uh, and that fit exactly what they want what they've told you that they want for example this is just a sample email um, you know try to ask questions are you free to go see some of them what do you think try to get feedback and then you know maybe write a sentence or two about each listing ideally um, like for example this hypothetical listing has high ceilings blah blah, blah. Ex you know basically the criteria that they look that they uh, asked for and then ask what they uh, what they think and then afterwards you can hit preview as well and then just hit email if you hit preview let me just show you what it looks like this is uh, an idea of what it looks like and then just hit email and that's it Now, you can also set up this search as a, um, as a saved search for a particular client. So whenever something new uh, pops up in the system in the RLS that fits these specific search criteria, you can have an alert uh, automatically be sent from RealTMX to the client. What you should do is to first save the search as a new search. To, uh, you can either name it after the client, that sometimes might be <laughs> easier, or you can, if you feel like you can assign the search to multiple clients who have the exact same or very similar criteria, you can do that as well. If you think it's reusable, and uh, if it's a new client, email alerts address again it's okay to show the full address including the apartment number um, you can do new listing only or price status changes this will be more frequent um, I recommend this if you have a client who is very active uh, and has very particular pace uh, perhaps you can do any updates it's up to you email interval email interval I mean this is pretty aggressive so I'd say once a day is pretty standard you could do weekly as well if it's someone who's not searching so actively um, include this is up to you um, include open houses this is always nice to have because it, it uh, it's critical information and unless you really don't trust your client uh, it's it's totally okay to share and just hit save You can always find your saved searches and uh, clients that have been assigned to in uh, really anywhere. So if you go back to the home page uh, and then you expand, for example, uh, recent clients, you will be able to see it. Uh, you can go to the clients tab. You can go to my stuff, uh, my clients. Um, all of those are options where you can see the, the essentially the saved search uh, and then edit it, delete it. Uh, even if you went to the search tab and you select the correct save search, you can then go uh, do the same search again. And uh, again, you can even from here, you can click on manage searches to see all the saved searches in the system. Uh, you can edit them, you can update uh, an existing search. Uh, so there's all, all sorts of things you can do to, to manage your searches for your clients. So for example, we've hit update saved search. Uh, we've selected the right one. You just hit save. Uh, presuming we made some changes to the, to the uh, search. And then that's saved. And then this search, as you know, is assigned to a specific client as well. And of course, if it is a generic search, you can assign this search to multiple clients. And that is really it. Thank you so much for watching our video on how to search for listings and send listings to clients from RealTMX and how to save searches and search alerts for our clients. Uh, if you found this tutorial useful, please feel free to subscribe to our channel, uh, like the video, and leave a comment if you have any questions. And of course, if you are a new agent just uh, starting your career in real estate, please reach out to us. 
We are consistently ranked one of the best brokerages for new agents in the city due to our extensive training programs and the ability for new agents to work on company sourced sales transactions. We also offer a commission split starting at 75% even to the newest agents uh, for their independently sourced and executed deals. And of course, we never have any hidden fees uh, such as startup fees, transaction fees, software fees, franchise fees, or I don't know, uh, bathroom fees. <laughs> we, uh, we are very transparent in that matter. And if you are interested in something like that, we would love to hear from you. Thank you so much.